This is usually back again for our program, Just Ask Islam, here on Guide US TV, only Islamic television channel in America, the, where we try to bring about a, a television channel that is both for and by the Muslims here. And uh, today, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we're back for our very popular series, Just Ask Islam. Can't wait to be hearing from you guys a little bit later in the program. But right now, I have someone to, to introduce everyone, Sheikh Jamal bin Amr. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair for being back with us again. Wa And while I'm, I'm working on right now trying to get our uh, Facebook page up here, uh, inshallah guys, you will be able to actually get a hold of us here in just a little bit. Uh, but for right now, we wanted to touch on the questions that we had last week. So, Sheikh Jamal, uh, the first of the questions that we had from, uh, from last week that we didn't get to was actually from our sister Miriam, and very special story about her, completely unrelated to this, but that she was the first person to call in live on the TV channel and she took her shahada Mashallah. on the same night, mashallah. Mashallah. So, the, the question that she had though from last week is that if someone leaves Islam, can they come back? Is there anything that they have to do? Uh, you know, a ritual? You know, anything like that to, uh, uh, if a person can come back and accept Islam again? Uh, of course he can. Of course he can. This is a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everyone he has his own journey with Allah. And whoever who committed sin or a major sin or who leave the path uh, of uh, journey to Allah according to, to his way. Of course, he had the opportunity to come back because Allah wants him to come back. Allah wants him to come back. Now, how to come back? It's, it's really uh, as someone when he commits a sin, he has to repent. And the full repentance requires sincerity, requires regret, and requires determination to get onto the path of righteousness and to not uh, promise to not with on himself so an oath to not get back to the to the wrong way it would be the same thing when someone coming back and it require uh, if there's something will be required of course is a full ghusl, a full uh, worship as uh, in, in intention uh, to to get back to the path of Allah and uh, coming back with the again the testimony of faith that he should say and and that's it mashallah so the 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 I, I believe if I'm not mistaken that there was actually an ayat of Quran which uh, uh, which put this out there actually uh, if I'm not mistaken that and in the hadith that Omar had written this down uh, for one of the uh, Muslims who had left Islam he went back to the to the pagans and then while he was riding his horse or something like that, he got the letter, he went out into the, into the mountains, and then he read it, and it didn't really click until he realized that Allah was talking about him, and then he left back from Mecca to go back to the Medina. If I'm not mistaken, do you, if you... No, I don't recall this story. Okay. Allah, Allah, yeah. So the, um, the, the main thing of it is, is that no matter what it is that we've done in our lives, no matter what it is, whatever ills that we've done, as long as we have that sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept us. Again. Actually, uh, it, it is stated in the Islamic faith that uh, anyone who caused someone to despair or to lose hope from Allah's mercy, that's actually an action of kufr, of denial and ungratefulness. Uh, there's no one who will be, uh, you know, hold off the path. There's no one 
or should be like said to him like you cannot come uh, come back this is not in no one's hand in the hand of the creator and then the hand of the creator who is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, therefore, anyone who wants to come back, he can come back, you know, and, and sincerely and submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will accept you. And we have a lot of stories in the Quran and also in the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And it's enough the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah uh, Az-Zumar. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O my servant who they have waste their own self, or like asraf ala anfusim, they did all the types of wrong. So the types of the wrong, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the other ayah, uh, those who transgress themselves. And transgression of the self is, is really kufr, is really uh, associating and partner with Allah. Transgressing the self is the rejection of the faith. So it can go up to that level. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال, say to this type of servant, to this my type of servant, uh, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgive all sins. That's it. All sins. So the sins of, you know, denial of ungratefulness, of shirk, associating partner with Allah, of blasphemy. As long as someone comes back sincerely, have that regret and oath to submit to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept him. SubhanAllah. And forgive all his sins. And forgive all of his sins. Yes. So uh, we know that if a person accepts Islam, that the sins that they committed, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exchanges them for good deeds. Is it the same if a person leaves Islam and comes back? The, let's say uh, not come back in, in a way like, you know, is like a gate or a door that someone leaves and goes back. No. Uh, leaving Islam or rejecting, is rejecting is, is a sin, is a major sin. It's, it's like someone, you know, changing his path is between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when he comes back sincerely, the true repentance, because when someone he's in Islam and he left, when he comes back, is going to be repentance with Islam. I mean, with embracing back the path. That repentance is always the sincere repentance erase whatever before. So even a Muslim, for example, is he's still Muslim and he will do a lot, for example, someone who doesn't pray at all for long, long years. When he comes back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases him. And we have the hadith of Zahih, the one who killed 99 soul. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him in his mercy because of his sincerity. MashaAllah. Yeah. So, Shaykh, we had a question actually from uh, our inbox. If you guys want to, you can hit us up uh, on facebook.com slash just ask Islam, share Islam, you'll be able to find us right there. You can send us a, a message in our inbox, as you all know, as we know, when the phone lines open up, they open wide up. But uh, we had a question in here, if there is a dua to get married. I think that this is a hot topic. <laughs> if there's any dua that a person can say that they want to get married, if there's a dua that they can say. The the dua is like a communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any type of communication, the best of the dua is to speak from the heart sincerely and following the etiquette of the dua. The dua should not have a content of something that is sinful or something that violates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua need to be said the best in, in the good time, uh, facing the qibla, uh, have like the presence of the heart, and having, you know, being like fully the heart is focused in what he's saying. And then he starts by praising Allah, glorifying him, and uh, sending the, the blessing and the peace on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is all, uh, uh, you know, kind of an introduction. Asking Allah with his names and attributes, and ask Allah for forgiveness. And then he will answer whatever dua he wants as long as he's halal. And it comes the the du'a of the marriage and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer them. And there is a general hadith of Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. They call it, you know, when someone has a real need for something and he wants to ask for it, is to pray to raka, you know, to have a time. And it's like a private meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He prays to raka and after praying to raka, in the end of that prayer, 
he intends that he going to make dua. So he wants to make dua within that prayer. He will pray with the full focus and everything. And at the end of the prayer, after the last tashad, he will say his dua. SubhanAllah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from that. All of our dua, inshallah. Inshallah. Allah. So, uh, Shaykh, now we also have another question of uh, someone that uh, sent it to us in our inbox that I need to ask about the sunnah prayer before dhuhr. Is it two or four raka? The sunnah prayer, you know, uh, there's really, uh, let's say it, 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 put it in this way. Uh, the obligatory prayer are five. And whatever someone he has, you know, the, uh, the ability to do it will be great, right? So the extra prayer is not an obligation. It's not like uh, some compulsory for someone to do it. Following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there is different uh, levels of the sunnah. So uh, the more you add, there is, for example, eight and ten and twelve, fourteen and sixteen. The more you add, but the no one for rakah are after, after door and two before. And then when you go someone to the higher or like more level, if you want to offer sunnah uh, more, then it's going to be four before and four after. But in the first set, that when, if you follow the sunnah, you know, it's going to be like four after and two before. Four after and two before. Mashallah. I'm sorry, uh, it's, it's a <laughs> mixed up. It's four before and two after. Oh, okay. Yes, the four is before and two after. And then if you go to the next level, if you want to offer more, you do four after. So the four is before, just to confirm. Okay. Four before and two after. And uh, before, just before we go to the break here, we've only got, uh, we've got three minutes left before we're going to go to the break. Uh, we have a question from last week. Can women lead in Salah? They can lead with, for women. But women cannot lead men. In the... In the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in the salah they cannot lead. They cannot lead because, not because they are not able to lead. We have women in the Islamic uh, generation, past generation, early generation, great scholars. But from the etiquette and from the way of having women uh, and men together, the woman cannot be advanced the man. I mean, the woman, she is like the center of the preoccupation of the man, and it is his fitness. So we cannot have a woman, you know, in a state of sujood in front of men. And that's really defy the sense of modesty, the sense of shyness. And in the salah, everyone is focused to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the leading, there is no like advantage in the leading or there is superiority in the leading. This is hukum shari. This is uh, a ruling that in the way of organization, as the man, he will be leading and the sister will be also, for their sake of focus, they will be in totally separate area. But the woman cannot lead the man because this is where we're trying to not, uh, you know, have the mix outside the, the, the prayer. How can we bring it inside the prayer? So to the main prayer, the main objective is the remembrance of Allah, is the focus. So to bring this, I mean, to have all the condition to help the folks and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such thing cannot happen. And all, it's unanimous be, be, uh, between all the scholars, and it is the guidance of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, the woman cannot lead in the prayer for lead the man. Of course, there is a hadith, but this hadith, there is a lot of saying in, in that. And if it's happened, it happened in a house uh, with old lady and the one who was uh, led by the prayer in the hadith that he was a very old man and he was making the adhan. So uh, that's it cannot be as hadith to make an analogy in it because it doesn't have the circumstances nor the dalalat, the, the, the signs and the, the, the evidence to build on this hadith to say such a thing. So, but if you look at it from, from mainly the point of the modesty, shyness, uh, focus, remembrance, the only, you know, to, to, to have this condition to be um, all together present for the prayer to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no woman should lead the man. So the, um, the other question with this as well for the, uh, well actually, you know what, they're telling me right now we have to go to a break. I wish that we could continue this one right now, but the phone lines are going to be open here in just a minute, inshallah, stay tuned, be right there. And if you're watching us right now, make sure to share this video and let everybody know 
to get guided, but guide us to get <laughs>
by the Prophet ﷺ for, ever tra for whoever was traveling toward the, the city of Mecca. Uh, at the Miqat, which is where he has to make his intention, he has also uh, everyone, men and women, they have to observe some action. Those actions that are forbidden. So observing this action to not, uh, to not do them. So there's forbidden action uh, for the men and the women. And this forbidden action would make someone to be in a state of haram. To make it easy to, to, to explain it in another way, once someone, for example, starts the prayer, um, he cannot eat. Outside the prayer, of course, it's halal to eat, <laughs> of course, halal food. He's not supposed, he, it's, not, it's forbidden to speak. It's forbidden to walk. As long as he's in his prayer. So in the prayer when he say Allah Akbar, that's why we call it takbirat al-haram, the takbirat of haram So you enter in a state, of forbidden state, there is a lot of things that someone cannot do. Then the tahleel is when you say assalamu alaikum, that's when you get out. The same thing for the ihram. When he comes to this state, he has to be in a state of ihram. One of the action for the man is to not wear anything that is makhit, makhit like, you know, things like sewn, tailored, like shirts. Let's take like a, sen a yes. pinpoint there. That I, they're telling me that we have a phone call is on the air. Oh, yeah. lost my earpiece here. Assalamu alaikum caller, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, sis, for giving us a phone call. What is your name and where are you calling from? Okay, my name is Asma. I'm calling from uh, Irving, Texas. Irving, Texas. Mashallah. We were just in mm -hmm. Irving last year. I, I miss... Everything is bigger in Texas and I miss it. Yes, yes, yes. I saw you. I, I saw everything. Not you, but I saw everything uh, when... The Sheikh comes in Irving. Oh, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. So, sister, uh, do you have a question tonight? Yes, I have a question. Are you ready? Tafadum, tafadum, inshallah. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is uh, okay, after, after Salat, there is no, um, there is no Sunnah, right? But if I go to mosque by just any chance after after uh, after, shall I pay the sunnah al masjid or not? Okay, mashallah. You know, we, when you enter masjid, you you, you pray uh, you pray like a uh, rakatin. So, can I do that or not until I have to wait until maghrib? Zakallah khair for your question. Uh, the sheikh, I think that you've got it, okay. and stay tuned. Inshallah, we will answer it. Zakallah khair. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, in this matter, there is a difference of opinion. This of, of opinion, uh, those who are saying, you know, there is no salat period after asr. You know, there is no salat period after asr because they take in consideration the time and the prohibition that was uh, announced by the Prophet that there is no prayer after asr. And just to refresh, you know, the, the, the five time when it's, there is no prayer, you know, nefila, not obligatory prayer, are the time between uh, Fajr and Shuruq, sunrise, the time of sunrise, the time of noon is when the, 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 the sun is in the middle of the, uh, in the heart of the sky, and then uh, between Asr and Maghrib and the time of the sunset. So those are the time when it's forbidden to pray. However, uh, some other scholar, and this is, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, many people see it doing it and it's fine to do it. Some of the scholars they put, they say, every prayer which has a reason, therefore it's out of this uh, boundaries, if you can say, of the prohibition. So it's not into this prohibition. The, the prayer, when someone comes to the masjid, is the salutation of the masjid. So it's like the right of the masjid to have observed the, observed the prayer. Therefore, we get it out of that time of prohibition. So that's why uh, certain scholars, you know, among them, you know, the Shafi and uh, other scholars, that they say uh, it is the, the, the right of the masjid. So when someone comes at any time, he will offer this two rakah for the masjid. When other they don't. So if someone, he, when he comes and he offers the two rakah uh, between Asr and Maghrib, a salutation of the masjid, Insha'Allah khair, there is no objection. There is actually a strong opinion uh, validating and justifying this. Sheikh, we also have another question that's coming in on our Facebook page here. Um, is the Qurbani 
uh, sunnah or wajib for the person who is at home? And can we give qurbani money to the poor and needy instead of doing the, the slaughtering uh, themselves? Um, because they said that someone told me that the best qurbani is to help them instead of feeding you know, a person one time. The Qurbani you were talking about the Udhiya of the Eid. Yes. The Udhiya of the Eid, it is really for some scholar is wajib, for other the, it is uh, it is Sunnah Mu'akkada. But also is also uh, let's say related to the one who can afford it. But uh, sacrifice and do the sacrifice, it is the Sunnah, it is the way. So when we say for example offer the Qurbani, it's not the Udhiya is not to feed the poor. This is an expression of, of worship. It is reviving the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam, being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we show the piety to Allah by have by the sacrifice. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hajj, لَيَنَالَ لَيَنَالَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when someone offers a sacrifice, he's not getting from the sacrifice the flesh and the blood, but he's getting it that expression, that piety that you have. Therefore, after doing the sacrifice, which is the action of worship, then it comes how to use it. So the sunnah is to use part to eat from it. That's the sunnah. And to share it with some of the friends and the family. And the third, if it can or whatever remaining, to give it to the poor. So the qurbani is not for the poor. The qurbani is action of worship that someone needs to do it. Now if someone cannot do that, cannot do that, he can uh, have someone else to do it on his behalf have you know pay the money for someone to get it and make it in his name you know and that's where it stops but someone to give money to say as a sadaqa for someone instead of the qurbani that will be totally different because the udhiya it is in, in itself the worship in the day of the eid for the one who can afford it it is great to do salat al-eid and after offer the qurbani eat some for, uh, of it share it and give to the poor, that is the way of the Eid, uh, in, in the Eid of al -Bahana. So, but is it also acceptable, like take for instance, a lot of the times, especially here in America, we send money back home for the family members to do the Qurbani there, that's perfectly acceptable? Uh, it's highly recommended to do it, you know, and to, to preserve this sunnah, you know, to preserve the sunnah, as you said, some of the scholars, they say actually the Udhiya is worship. If someone cannot do it, not because for, you know, many people like out of nonchalance, they said, you know, uh, the, I, I will send it. They send it where and what about you? Mm. You're going to pray the thing, this is a son. I mean, sometimes, you know, also good for the family. I mean, the next generation will be, will be always sending it and the kids, they will not see any such, you know, great thing. So they will not be able to do it in the next generation. There will not be a learning of that. So at least if someone cannot do it, because under certain circumstances it might not be possible for someone to do it, uh, you know, it depends on the neighborhood, depends on someone, you know, there's the, um, the, the possibility to do it or, you know, the facilities to do it, etc. At least they will be teaching each other and learning, especially for the, for the children about the importance of the Udhiya and what they need to be done of the Udhiya. And to remember the story of Ibrahim السلام, with Ismail and to also remember the story of the Prophet وسلم, when he offered a hundred camel وسلم, in the, in the Udhiya, in the Hajj. You know, so that's one of the things that we, we need to, to, to keep in our I think mind. someone and, actually mentioned that in a Juma Khutbah. I'm yeah. sure who it was. <laughs> Except for the guy that I'm looking at right yeah, now. Yeah. So uh, we also have another question here about when you're a teenager, what do you recommend uh, that you should focus on uh, in knowledge uh, in Islam? Uh, I'm guessing that for someone who's active, maybe MSA or in uh, the field of Dawah, I think that this is a, this is a pretty general, <laughs> yes. and a very big topic. Well, like the, the most important, the most important subject, it will be the aqidah, the faith and the Qur'an. Faith, which is someone to really get the foundation of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the foundation of his, you know, uh, the etiquette, how to worship. And then the foundation that when someone he talks, 
he had that identity of Muslim being fully anchored so he can share it and he can you know be himself that good light that can be lantern for others and then uh, the most important into the way of the faith is to be close to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so reading the book of Allah studying the book of Allah that's the greatest of the thing and then comes after that uh, the knowledge that is required for everyone which is uh, you know, in, uh, in Sharia, we have what is recommended, we have what is obligatory, right? And there's, in the obligation, there's two parts. There's the individual obligation and the collective obligation, right? So the collective obligation, uh, you know, depends on the, on the community. If uh, a member of the community will fulfill it, it will not be obligatory on the rest of the community. But the individual obligation is everyone has to know it. So we have the aqidah, the faith, the Qur'an, but before that, everyone need to know everything that is obligatory for him. Everyone need to study the prayer, to know how to pray, to know when he does mistake, for example, in the prayer, how to do it, to know how to fast. Then, if someone, for example, have a business, he need to know those uh, elements or aspects of the Sharia, of the Islamic jurisprudence concerning to the business. So why? Because in every action we do, we, we seek in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, every action that we do, we need to have the knowledge required for that action at the individual level. Allah ta'ala. MashaAllah. And after that, alhamdulillah, someone can go farther in studying uh, fiqh jurisprudence, studying the usul, uh, which is very important to understand the uh, the, the the fiqh and to, to be able to understand the fundamental of the sharia and then studying the principle of the sharia studying the maqasid uh, studying the sources of the sharia uh, which is the hadith and the known the hadith of the prophet sallallahu known the sound uh, the difference between the sound and the hasan and the da'if and all of that it comes together later on but the basic one is the faith the aqidah the quran and whatever is obligatory on every one of us needs someone to study it and know it. MashaAllah. I think I know a good teacher that they could learn from too. Alhamdulillah. Considering that you're also my teacher as well. Jazakumullah So Shaykhna, um, uh, while we're waiting actually for the, uh, the rest of the questions, you guys can get a hold of us. The phone number should be on the screen. Yes, it is. Uh, at 1-800-971-4383. And you can also give us a, a message on our um, uh, our Facebook page for Just Ask Islam slash Share Islam. You can also go online to www.justaskislam.com where you can uh, get your questions and you can also check out previous articles, shows such as this one, and even uh, download some of our templates uh, and uh, check out our uh, Share Islam project from there. And all of that, we put it up for you guys for free to where you guys can go there. You can go to www.justaskislam.com and you'll be able to get a hold of us right there. So we have another question here of when is Eid? The Eid is the 10th of the Hajj. So it's the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. The 10th of Dhul Hijjah, uh, the Hajj, you know, you have the main days for everyone who's not uh, going to Hajj, is they can take part of this big festival, great festival, this great festival of worship. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling us in Hadith that the best days of the dunya, of the whole world, the best days of the world, are the days of the Dil Hijjah, the first ten days of the Hijjah. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the hadith, the meaning of which, uh, you know, th there is no such great deeds or deeds done in days better than these days of the Hijjah for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the best of the action or the action that you do, you'll be greatly rewarded in the ten of the Dil Hijjah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by these days in the beginning of Surah Al-Fajr, qala wa layalin ashr. Those are the 10 days that someone need to multiply his action of worship, you know, prayer, fasting, sadaqah, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
then uh, you know to not uh, take more time in, in the details of uh, of uh, quoting more ahadith but this are very important greater than any days subhanallah then you have the day of arafah the ninth of the hijjah is where the hadith will be on top of arafah anyone who is not uh, in hajj he should fast that day he should fast that day and it has great reward that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will subhanallah in, in many of the hadith and the bounties of it that allah will expiate a, a year before and a year after of sins the day of the eid comes the next day Mashallah. so uh, it will allah alam uh, according to the calendar but this is depends on the moon sighting of when the first of the hijjah will be but according to the moon calendar uh, to the calendar i think it's around the august 31st Mashallah. or september 1st yeah. so shaykhna uh, we have a break that is coming up right now um we're going to go ahead and take that break inshallah ta'ala if we can get the uh, technicians here inshallah and um Zakallah khair, make sure that you guys stay right there. Don't go away. We've got a whole lot more coming up right here. Get guided. We got us to be. <laughs> Do we need Guide Us TV? Obviously we do need Guide Us TV in order to clarify the misconceptions created by others and in order to present the correct image of Islam. So get guided by Guide Us TV. Get guided with Guide Us TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everyone, this is Omar Suleiman, the founder of Umflix.com and resident scholar at the Valley Ranch Islamic Center. Guidus.tv is bringing Islam to your home 24-7, 365 days a year for absolutely no cost. All they're doing is seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's up to us to continue this great work. If you want to be a part of it, go to www.guidus.tv slash donate. Jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Get connected with Guide Us TV. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash guideustv1. Join us on Google Plus, plus.google.com slash plus guideustv. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash guideustv1. Find us on Flickr, flickr.com slash photos slash guide us tv and add us on linkedin linkedin.com slash guide us tv get guided with guide us tv Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is usually back again for Just Ask Islam. Right before we went to the break, we were tackling a bunch of questions and we have even more that are on our Facebook page as well as uh, calls that we're waiting for you guys to actually give us a phone call. You can give us a call 1-800-971-4383. As always, we start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. And we're back again, again, for Just Ask Islam. We are with our Sheikh Jamal bin Amr. And uh, Sheikh, now we got a question while we were on the break. We got a question here on our Facebook page that, Assalamu alaikum, brother. My question is, Friday, I can't go to pray Juma because of my schedule. The, the Friday prayer... And yes, prayer, it is a man, by the way. Yeah, the, the Friday prayer is an obligation on every... Uh, Mel, you know, of every uh, man. Uh, and someone is really, I mean, in, in, in a society which is not a society like, you know, majority of Muslim where 
where people they go to the to the prayer uh, and actually the day off is the time of the uh, of the of Jumu'ah or they have the breaks for to go to the to the Jumu'ah. Uh, we're saying to to our dear brother uh, that say try to go because this is an obligation. And uh, we believe that if someone make the first step intending uh, goodness and tending to please Allah, Allah make it easy for him. And uh, alhamdulillah, uh, you know, by experience, we have many people who had some problem because of their job. And, uh, you know, when they approach, you know, some of our, uh, you know, masajid, and they had, you know, correspondence with their jobs, all of them, they welcome that. So they give them the break and they give them the opportunity to observe their, their Jumu'ah, knowing that uh, many people, when they know that the Muslim, they have the Jumu'ah, also they know that uh, they're one who work for them, you know. He will be more productive if they give him the opportunity to worship because they try to help them give his peace. Therefore, we're saying everyone needs to do this effort and ask first, not to say because of my schedule I cannot go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who obligated you and calling you for it. For our sake, for our benefit, for our mercy, for our blessing. If we don't do that effort to go, therefore, we are not, you know, there is a shortcoming here. There is, there is something that is not right. But if someone will do all those steps, and then I will say, Fattakullah Mastata'atum, someone he did all what he can do, but uh, you know, he could not do it because of circumstances. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him to find. Uh, you know, to, to loosen or to, to manage his schedule there so he can, he can do it, uh, the Jumu'ah. But we cannot have an excuse because of my schedule so I cannot go. That's, that's not right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him. And one of the worship is to pray, to stand for him, and to go to the Jumu'ah, which is one of the obligatory uh, things that is uh, in our deen and our faith. Therefore, we're saying to our dear brother, please make your effort. Ask Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah is going to be easy for you uh, soon to go to the Jumu'ah. And if someone cannot do it, we said he did what he can do and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. MashaAllah. So Shaykhna, um, I think also one of the questions that, that people have um, is that uh, in the universities, a lot of the times, you know, the, the, you know they have the university room is it acceptable for the students to pray their Juma at the university? Yes, it is accepted. And, uh, you know, the number of uh, the crowd to, to fulfill the condition of the Juma, uh, you know, there's difference between of the scholar between 14, 12, and 3. So if we we'll go with the opinion of 3, so 3 students together, they can make a Juma. And the Juma is like you make the Adhan, and the Khatib will stand, Say like a few words, remind them with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the whole Jum'ah will not even last five minutes if they can. And they pray together and they made the Jum'ah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. So it doesn't have to be 30 minutes? No. I was th uh, no. <laughs> no, this is, the Jum'ah's condition is to khutbah. So the khutbah can be uh, as short as reminding someone the taqwa, like the introduction, like uh, learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remind them of taqwa, remind them of uh, connecting to Allah, remind them of the hereafter, sit and stand back, do dua, and this is, will be enough, inshallah ta'ala. And, and I realize that as well is that um, reading through the, the, the khutbahs of the Prophet wasallam, they were short. I mean. But he had, you know, what they called pregnant the, speech. And he has the jawami al-kalam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his sallam. words, they were wahi, revelation. Subhanallah. Yeah. So, uh, while we're waiting right now, guys, we do have the phone number on the screen. We have time just for one more caller. So, if you guys are watching us right now, you can give us a phone call. 1-800-971-4383. Be able to get a hold of us. You can also get a hold of us, again, at our Facebook page, as well as online. If you go to our website, it's www.justaskislam.com. You can check out previous articles. You can also ask your questions right there. We will try to get them. We are working on the website, so please be patient with us, inshallah ta'ala. The other thing that you can do is to go to our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com slash justaskislam.shareislam. 
inshallah ta'ala you can be able to get hold of us there and ask your questions we are going through the comments as we go through the program and um we haven't i'm just refreshing the page here we tackled about when is the age uh the friday prayer as well as uh what comes in for the teenagers one of the questions that um also comes in for the um uh, for the dying the person you know the teenager they're active in the msa maybe they're trying to set up for a you know a um a speech about islam within their school um from your opinion what is the most important thing for like the dai to to really focus on the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Al-Yaman to call and to share the deen of Allah and to convey the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet, peace be upon him he said to Mu'adh, he said you're going to meet people of the book call them to the oneness of Allah and if they answer you then talk to them about prayer and everything so uh, the most important for the da'iyah to share is la ilaha is the oneness of Allah, is the aspect of that oneness, the oneness of the deity, the oneness of the lordship, uh, the, 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 the element and the pillar of the faith in Islam, uh, and then how the Muslim they act, uh, you know, through, you know, righteousness, racing for the good, uh, and they have their pillar who like, you know, kind of orchestrating and managing their life and the, the testimony of faith, their prayer, their zakat, their fasting, their had, uh, and all of that. Uh, therefore, it will be the best approach is to share the beauty of Islam, not to defend in an apologetic way the deen of Islam. It is the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being uh, happy and, and um, pride with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and share this beauty and the most folks or the focus need to be uh, put on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la ilaha illallah as being as I said uh, inspiring from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with Mu'adh ibn Jabal subhanallah so we give the message that's just our job yes convey qal inna ma alayka al bala subhanallah so in these last, uh, we have about four minutes left in the program, so we don't have any more times for, uh, we have no more time for any calls, but we do have time to tell you guys about uh, making sure to follow us on um, our show. We do have the show every week until our Shaykh is uh, going to be going for Hajj, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to see that, inshallah. And uh, what we're planning to do, inshallah ta'ala, is uh, we're going to have something very special in um, the month of Dhul Qaeda, where we're going to be having a Hajj seminar here at Alaman Center. But also as part of this is that we will be bringing you guys the program, but from a, uh, a live audience setting, inshallah ta'ala. As part of this program, inshallah, we will be live back with you guys every single week here on Guidus TV. Well, uh, at 7 p.m. that's Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific. So we have three minutes just left in the program right now. Sheikh Jamal, any final remarks? <laughs> so guys, make sure that you um, tune in every single week, and as always, make sure that uh, if you can, inshallah, please do support the program uh, within your du'a. But also, if you can make a donation, you go to www.guideus.tv slash donate. You can go to www.guideus.tv slash donate, where you can make a contribution, help the TV channel. That's what keeps us on the air. We are a television station, which is brought to you, not by donations of big governments or big companies, but... It is for the viewers, by the viewers. This is a television station for the Muslims, by the Muslims, and has to also be supported by the Muslims. And uh, Sheikhna, we're in the last two minutes of the uh, program. Uh, Jazakumullah khair for the Jazakumullah invitation. Khair. And then uh, if we want to wrap everything together, uh, how to share the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to share Islam, is first we need uh, 
for us to embrace the spirit of goodness, the spirit of racing for the good and competing and racing for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have it and we talk about it, subhanAllah, many people will not sharing the, the way of Islam, will not following the way of Islam, they will have many of their question answered. answered. Because sometimes we want to defend, we say, oh, the jihad is not what you think. Or the woman is not what you think. No, share what we have. Share that the spirit that we have, the spirit that the Prophet ﷺ taught us, that morality, that the way of the guidance, that, uh, you know, the, the racing every day. I mean, every day when you wake up for Fajr, you're racing for the good. You have the spirit. This channel is the same. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with his blessing and help us to be good example for others and help us to be firm on the path and good example for others. Allahumma ameen. And with that, we guys, we are off, but make sure that you tune in again for us next week. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And get guided with Guidance TV. Oh.